microphone. My name is Mary Parsons, and I am President and CEO of the Fountain Valley Chamber of Commerce. This forum is a public service brought to you by the Chamber. Our moderator for tonight is Kip Crandall. Kip was born and raised in Fountain Valley, and he was pre denier of the class of 1999 at Fountain Valley High School. Kip received his undergraduate degree in economics with honors from UC Berkeley and his law degree from USC. Kip currently practices business and employment litigation as an attorney in the Irvine office of the law firm of Robertson and Olson LLP and is also a member of the Fountain Valley Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We're excited to be here tonight and we're looking forward to the light each candidate will shed on their positions on the issues that are critical to the health and the future of the great city of Fountain Valley. The organizers of tonight's forum decided that this year we're going to try something different than what we've done in our forums in the past years. In order to prevent the candidates from piggybacking on one another's responses and to keep the candidates on their toes, we'll be jumping around a bit in the order that we ask each candidate each question, except for the first question. The candidates have been seated by ballot order, and we will begin with opening statements from my right and at the end of the night, closing statements will begin from my left. Uh, Mrs. Brothers, your opening statement, please. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Cheryl Brothers, and I've lived in Fountain Valley for over 40 years. I'm um, currently serving on your city council. I have served the city in different capacities since 1992. I've helped develop your parks, had influence on your planning development, and I'm a respected leader in the city and Orange County, holding many leadership roles since 1996. I know the city inside and out. I would like to serve you again. And I had a lot to do with the, what influenced you and attracted you to the city as it is today. Thank you, Mrs. Brothers. And Mr. Tucker. Good evening, my name is Patrick Tucker. I'm a 24-year resident in Fountain Valley. I'm married to my wife, Bonnie. We have two grown children who are products of the Fountain Valley School District and Fountain Valley High School. Uh, they're grown. My son is a graduate of Cal State Long Beach, and my daughter is attending University of Nevada, Reno. I work for Allen Tire Company. I've been there for 29 years, starting as a tire technician, working my way up through the ranks to assistant manager, manager, district manager, and today I am Vice President of Sales and Operations for 18 stores in Southern California overseeing the operation of the company. I think I would be a fine candidate to put some private sector smarts on the City Council, uh, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Ms. Constantine. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Kim Constantine, 50 years of age and originally from Allentown, Pennsylvania with deep roots here. It's my second time running for council in the city I love so much. I remain an active member of several Fountain Valley organizations and I'm easily accessible to everyone at 714-335-2280. I regularly attend the planning, city council, and strategic planning meetings. So far, I've been endorsed by the CRA, which is the California Se Republican Assembly, Fountain Valley. I will remain fully committed and ready to work hard for our residents and businesses, just as I did in getting Clear Channel to move on from erecting a Las Vegas style sign here. The incumbents were on board to have it shining brightly 24 seven into Costa Mesa neighbor neighborhoods and for 30 years. Soon more work on the Fountain Valley crossings. It's the rezoning of approximately 162 acres near the 405 freeway at Ellis. You can count on me to fight against high density housing and high rise office towers of up to six stories that are being promoted and enabled by rezoning designed to displace good job providing businesses that support our community, the light manufacturing. In regards to measure HH, the Fountain Valley sales tax increase that will last 20 years, please be aware that if it passes any new or used vehicle, truck, motorcycle, RV, boat, or motorhome you buy, will be taxed at the higher sales rate. Same with any delivered appliances, such as refrigerators, televisions, washing machines, clothes dryers, and stoves, all taxed higher, no matter where you buy. I look forward to serving you as a member of the Fountain Valley City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. And Mr. Nagel. 
Yes, good evening, everybody. Thanks for being here for uh, this uh, session tonight. Uh, I'm uh, a former uh, Fountain Valley firefighter, paramedic, uh, captain, battalion chief, and fire marshal, building uh, safety manager. I started in 1977, and I've been on probably every street in town uh, multiple times uh, on some. And uh, I do know the city uh, quite well. I've been part of the management team when I was a, a battalion chief. So I, I understand the budget and the responsibilities uh, placed upon me. Uh, my priority is uh, fiscal responsibility, and I'm committed to listening to you uh, while maintaining uh, a highly trained uh, police and fire uh, departments uh, that uh, we recognize as being the sole reason for cities being developed was public safety. So that is very paramount in my plans for, for the future and also make sure that our public uh, uh, is taken care of with our sewer and water and uh, we also uh, uh, understand that the importance that uh, we uh, have uh, economic concerns, therefore I'm looking to uh, uh, our future development that is uh, uh, maintain in a, a reasonable way, but also making sure that uh, we do this in a, a way that's uh, at the interest of the city and also for the sustainability for our future as a city. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Mr. Nagel, we'll start with you for the first question. And the question is, what motivates you to run for re-election? Well, I've been on the council uh, just finishing up my eighth year. I uh, was re-elected in 2012 from my first term. Uh, I was the top vote getter at that time. And uh, I believe uh, people find that I'm uh, reasonable. I use common sense and I make sure that uh, uh, we live within our budget. We have some problems with our budget because of uh, things that are, are out of our hands as a city, but we've uh, put together uh, uh, items uh, where we contract out for services. We've cut all the uh, benefits for a city council at my lead, and uh, I believe that uh, we have a three-tiered retirement system that uh, has uh, shown that uh, we take it very seriously that we control our costs. And we've done away with uh, medical uh, benefits, and we also uh, make certain that uh, we, uh, when we do have a contract, we continuously look for our uh, city to follow our guidelines that we find w within our uh, strategic planning process. We do this every six months, and we look three years in advance and uh, I believe that that's the right course to continue to follow, make sure that we keep things up to date yet within our budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. And Ms. Constantine, what motivated you to become a candidate for this Fountain Valley City Council? Well, I ran two years ago. I'm very active in the city. I care a great deal about this city. Um, never want to leave. It, it's hard for me to go elsewhere, even though not everything's here in Fountain Valley. Um, just in, in preserving the integrity of the city, uh, not letting you know it become like a Las Vegas style atmosphere with that clear channel sign, and we don't want a lot. We don't want high density here. We don't want to displace good uh, job providing businesses in our light manufacturing area. So just to keep the city making sense operationally and to hopefully contribute to getting fiscal stability because we don't have it now. So just getting us on a better track, working with city staff, that really motivates me to, to do what I do and be active here. Thank you. Thanks. And Ms. Constantine, there's a, the follow-up that's drafted for this question is also please include the expertise you would bring to the position and feel free to follow up on that with the minute remaining or um, to pass. Sure. Well, um, I'm very active in the city. I attend all city meetings, take notes, uh, watch video playback when I need to, uh, have an open mind, feel that I have a good relationship with city staff and current council. Um, just being respectful 
and be willing to table the issues and discuss them all for the best interest of the city, the residents, and our businesses. Just keeping an open mind. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. And Mr. Tucker, what motivated you to become a candidate for the Fountain Valley City Council? Uh, I have a desire to make things right again in Fountain Valley. I served on the Fountain Valley High School baseball board for four years at a time when the state did away with funding for any extracurricular activities at the schools. So we could no longer charge the students who were uh, enjoying the facilities any fees to play ball. So we had to find creative ways of, of getting money. We were able to get some con uh, contributions. We put up a scoreboard at the varsity baseball field. We had a flagpole erected, all new fencing, palm trees, uh, artificial turf infield, which saved money on, on maintenance. Um, we did a phenomenal job in four years turning that ball field around. Um, I know through my business experience what it takes to attract customers. I know what it takes to control expenses. I know what it takes to make a payroll. The folks who have worked in county and city jobs their whole life don't have to worry about making a payroll. They can just run to the mill and get some more taxes. Well, that doesn't work in the private sector. We have to make our own payroll. Fountain Valley needs a new perspective. Um, I heard fiscal responsibility. I don't call $1.37 million, $1.3 million deficit one year, $1.7 million deficit another year, five of the last seven years pulling from reserves. That's not fiscal responsibility. We're spending more than we're, breaking in, we're bringing in. With me, what you see is what you get, okay? Tell the truth probably rub some people the wrong way, but that's, um, sometimes that's required. Um, I want to help keep Fountain Valley a nice place to live. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And Mrs. Brothers, what motivates you to run for re-election? Thank you. Well, we're clearly at a crossroads, and I use that word um, because that's, that's where the city is right now. Um, I think I bring a common sense approach and I thoroughly understand the outside impacts to city governance. Um, I don't want to be in a position to set back this city with ideas of things that have already been done. Um, I hear that, hear that a lot in the community is why don't you do this or that and, and a number of those things have already been done. Uh, high density in this city sounds like a dirty word, but it's what young professionals are attracted to. And anything beyond your single family home on a 7,200 square foot lot, I guess, is considered high density. Uh, that's far from it. We have apartment buildings in town that by those standards would be high density. Uh, I, I, I do understand city governance and the restrictions that are put upon us from the state. We can't attract new customers to raise our income. That's not how it works. Uh, we can't sell more widgets. That's not how it works. And it was fiscally responsible for many years to put aside those reserves that we've lived on for the last 10 years. And outside forces have caused us to have the deficit we have today. Uh, I understand that, and I want to help find a way to um, bring us out of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brothers. And the next question stays with you, Mrs. Brothers, and it is, do you recommend the city make budget cuts? If so, where and how? Or do you recommend the city enhances the budget? If so, how and for what? And I can, I can feel free to ask me to reread a question. Some of these are a little lengthy. So if you need it reread to you, um, feel free to ask. No, I think we're fine. Um, the city has been making budget cuts since 2008. We've made a number of cuts that most of the uh, citizens here have not been aware of. And that was by design. We did not want to impact your core services. So we made cuts in areas where we could. Uh, I'm not going to say they weren't painful. Uh, it put a lot of stress on the existing staff who had to double up and do more jobs than they uh, had in the past. And 
so a lot of cuts were made. Would I make further cuts? Well, if Measure HH does not pass, uh, this city will be forced to make further cuts. I'm prepared to do that. I know where the um, big expenditures are. I know what can be cut to make a difference. It will be painful, so I don't recommend it. I certainly don't want to do it, but I am prepared to if that's, if that's um, what the voters decide. But I actually hope they decide to Pay, pay fairly for the services they receive today and that we can continue to make Fountain Valley a nice place to live. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brothers. And Mr. Tucker, the question to you is, what is your position on Fountain Valley's ballot initiative, Measure HH, and why? I believe that Fountain Valley ballot initiative HH is extremely excessive based on the information and the numbers put out by Mr. Kane, the city is suffering $1.3 million deficit last year, $1.7 million deficit this year. And yet this tax, increase in sales tax, by their numbers will bring in $11.7 million a year. That is well over five times the amount that's necessary and I believe if you take five times more than is necessary from people who are already overtaxed is wrong. I think that our residents, our neighbors can do a much better job holding on to the 80 cents on the dollar than giving it to government. Um, government with a pocket full of money is going to blow it. Uh, to go back to some things, there's a uh, the city governments are barraged by regulations from the state. Private sector is barraged by the same regulations. Um, term limits. In 2004, the city of Fountain Valley voted for term limits, and that was three terms of four years. Um, I think we have several city council members who have already served three terms of four years. That's 12 years. So. I, I'm sure there's a loophole somewhere in it, and I'm sure someone will explain this loophole, but I think the intent of the voter was to have three terms of four years, and I just don't think the intent of our neighbors is being followed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And Ms. Constantine, the question to you is, how do you propose Fountain Valley attract new businesses? Well, I think first of all, we need to do a little bit of um, maintenance in our uh, in the office there at here at City Hall um, look at our procedure our fee schedules and the procedures and then we can I'd like to partner with the Fountain Valley Chamber of Commerce and um, put the word out to other cities that we are very business friendly here because we have a uh, less than stellar reputation I have to say um, it shouldn't be a problem to attract business here, but we first need to do a little maintenance first. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. And Mr. Nagel, the question to you is, what issue or issues do you view as most important in the city of Fountain Valley and why? I believe uh, the most important issue at this time is uh, to make sure that we have funds going forward. And the reason that Measure HH is being uh, uh, put on the ballot for the voters decide and that means every resident in Fountain Valley gets uh, gets their voice heard uh, one percent nobody likes a tax increase I sure as heck don't but uh, I know we need it because I've been part of the the council that's uh, made uh, drastic cuts to our budget uh, over five million dollars since 2008 I think that's very significant we refinanced our side fund uh, for CalPERS. We uh, did that last year, taking about eight, nine million dollars away from the total cost uh, because we refinanced it from a seven and a half percent loan to uh, four percent. It's it's moving in the right direction, and uh, the cost uh, is less over the long run. And uh, those types of things are important that uh, we uh, hold up and make sure that uh, 
we can make our, our payroll, but we look at it, like I say, with the strategic planning process, we make certain that we can live within uh, the cuts we make, but we also make sure that we're uh, still delivering the services that you all uh, expect and uh, desire. It's very important that uh, our uh, public safety is remains number one, and uh, we don't want increased response times. If we lose, uh, say, a station, it's going to affect our uh, coverage overall, and uh, people wanting to live in the city maybe not want to. So that's going to decrease our home prices uh, over time, and it's not going to be very pleasant. One percent is a lot. Thank you. And, and actually, Mr. Nagel, um, because the next question comes right back to you, and it is pretty well tied into um, where you were going. The question is, what three citywide programs do you consider most important and why? And that's that a new two minutes starts for that okay. question. All right. Uh, three most important things. Public safety, our uh, city infrastructure, uh, and we, we also have to make certain that uh, our delivery of service is uh, very expedient, but also make certain that we do things the most efficient way, which co saves cost. But so cost, public safety, and city infrastructure are extremely important, and I th think uh, with the one percent, uh, we can see that those services will continue, as well as pay down the debt of uh, approximately 120 million round up. And uh, I believe those. It's just like your mortgage, 15-year mortgage. You pay off a lot quicker. Your uh, uh, costs are, are half of what they're going to be on a 30-year mortgage, and uh, so. The sooner we pay it down, the more uh, chance we have of getting our head above water and make certain that we have a future, and we expect that to happen in about 18 years. So the sooner we do it, the much better it is for everybody and all our taxpayers in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. And Ms. Constantine, the next question to you is, what issue or issues do you view as most important in the city of Fountain Valley and why? What issues? Well, I think, <clears throat> first of all, we have a situation with, uh, because of Measure HH out there. The main issue right now is the morale of our residents in getting correct information from City Hall. That has not been the case recently. Um, there's a lot going around out there. Thank you. Would, would you care to elaborate? on that well I mean in measure HH I mean there's one percent some people are saying uh, one cent um, surveys in the magazine have not been uh, correct there's been some information missing um, the one pagers in the magazine regarding measure HH there's so many leading words in there I mean we're having a real morale problem in the city uh, City Hall should put out just basic information about the measure and not approach it leading people because that's not right. That makes me and others who are against it work even harder to say no on Measure HH. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. And Mr. Tucker, the next question to you is how do you propose Fountain Valley attract new businesses? We need new blood on council. We need a new perspective on city council. Our incumbents have tried. Believe me, I know they've tried. But it's not working. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is a definition of, well, anyway. We need to ease up the conditional use permit program. Um, I have spoke to City Council on numerous occasions on a proposal that would actually bring more money to the city, would attract more businesses to the city with just the smallest tweak in the conditional use permit process. And I'm going to share it with the public and see if this makes sense. Right now, 
if Allen Tire Company were to come in and open a, want to open a store and it required a conditional use permit, I would go to the counter and they would say, okay, give me 3500 bucks and we'll look at it. I said, well, can you tell if it's going to pass or not? We'll look at it. My proposal is very simple and it is somebody comes in and wants to open a business and it requires a conditional use permit, charge $500. $500 for a yes, no, or maybe. Then if it's approved, you charge a $3,000 administrative fee. So you're going to have a whole lot more applications coming in at $500 a piece. And anybody who wants to move forward, you're still going to get their $3,500. It is the most basic. And for four and a half, five years, I've come up here and brought it up time and time again. And I have not been given a reason why that can't happen. You want to attract business? Give them a reason to come to family, come to Fountain Valley, and come to our family. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And Mrs. Brothers, the next question to you is, what is your position on Fountain Valley's ballot initiative, Measure HH, and why? I support the measure, um, only partly because I know what the city has done since 2008. And as I stated before, all of the cuts and changes that were made were by design so that you weren't impacted unnecessarily by those changes. So those things have been done. Uh, there's no low-hanging fruit to, to look at anymore. And going forward, as Councilmember Nagel pointed out, we have a deficit. We have what you can call a mortgage. And the 1% was designed on purpose to pay our ongoing structural de debt, which is the 1.4 in three years, 4.4. But that's not paying down the mortgage, which we owe to the state and to our retirement system. So that's what the 1% uh, was designed to do, is to pay that down and, in fact, pay it down early so we can replenish our reserves, which is what we've lived on since 2008. I don't think that was irresponsible. Uh, we expected the economy to turn around, and it simply has not done that for us. We don't have all of the same amenities that some of our surrounding cities have, and we have just not seen that happen. And I would uh, hopefully get a chance to speak to the CUP process, because with a better understanding, you would know that if you comply with the existing zoning, you don't go through that conditional use permit process. You simply apply for a business license, and, and it can be granted. Um, you only have to get a CUP if you're not complying with the zoning. And we do zoning to protect all of you so that we have an orderly process for growth. And Mrs. Brothers, the, the next question uh, comes right back to you. And let me, let me take one second um, just to let the audience know, we've, we've come to the point where we are going to collect questions from the audience after the next round. So if you have any final questions to jot down on the index cards, you should do them now. And we'll be picking them up after we get um, through with Mr. Nagel. And so again, Mrs. Brothers, this question comes back to you. And it is, how do you propose Fountain Valley attract new businesses? We have a project that's in the development stage right now, and we've spent a lot of time on it. This is not the first time we've looked at it. We had a, another process that happened um, in the same freeway corridor many years ago with roughly the same result. That's our biggest asset in the city. We're not marketing it in a way that's the most um, productive. And by increasing the permissible zoning through that freeway corridor, that would attract new business. Um, what's there is underutilized, tired, and um, not acting, not producing to its fullest. And, and can you elaborate a bit more on how rezoning is expected to uh, increase and attract new businesses? <clears throat> the rezoning will have um, areas of use changes. Uh, somebody could come in today and say, I want to uh, manufacture cabinets, and I want to build a four-story building. And they could do that by right. 
Uh, manufacturing doesn't occur much anymore. The uses of those have changed. Resta retail is uh, curtailed, and this would expand those uses and make them uh, more viable for developers. And uh, we think by rezoning this area and having the environmental impact report completed, uh, that's a huge incentive to developers to come in and, and look at other uses. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Brothers. And Mr. Tucker, the next question to you is, what issue or issues do you view as most important in the city of Fountain Valley and why? It was just touched on, and that is the Fountain Valley Crossings Project opens a tremendous can of rattlesnakes. They bite. The proposal includes I'll try and keep this as, as simple for everybody. It's called form-based zoning. But what this, in essence, does for you residents of City of Fountain Valley is allows somebody to come in and want to build something like on the corner of Beach and Ellis, the Elan building, and they can get it. In its simplest form, form-based housing is somebody can come into the planning department and they get to make decisions almost carte blanche as to what can go in there. It just removes the restrictions on zoning to be a little more artsy friendly. Um, Fountain Valley has its own unique identity. We are a bedroom community. We want to stay a bedroom community. We want to keep it the way it is. The young professionals, they can buy their places in Huntington Beach. I had to work my way to be able to afford a home in Fountain Valley. We all had to work our way. And why did we move to Fountain Valley? Because it gave us something that we desired. It was quiet, it was families, it was a bedroom community. Okay, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but I think that's why we all moved here as a Shangri-La, as a uh, respite from the rest of the crazy world. And I, for one, do not want High density housing, HUD housing, whatever you want to call it, the stuff that's on Beach and, in, and Ellis is, is, a, is an atrocity, and it can be built in the crossings if they're able to change the zoning. So that's the number one thing we have to do is stop the change of zoning at the crossings project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And Ms. Constantine, the next question to you is, what three citywide programs do you consider most important and why? Well, in no particular order, um, I would say for sure senior programs, as we have a very large number of older residents, the senior center and programs are very important to their livelihood. Um, public safety, it's a good part of our budget, our police and fire, and um, the infrastructure of our city. Thank you. And would you like to elaborate on why those are the, the most important? No, okay. thank you. Thank you. The next question is for Mr. Nagel. Uh, do you recommend the city make budget cuts? If so, where and how? Or do you recommend the city enhances the budget? If so, how and for what? Well, I always look at the budget first. Uh, budget cuts is uh, if we don't need uh, certain employees, we can either contract out and you know, we uh, lose uh, employees through attrition. Uh, and if uh, the jobs that they're doing d isn't supported by what our needs are, then we, we do, will do and make cuts where necessary. But uh, we've looked out and uh, actually have uh, contracted out for a lot of our uh, labor uh, issues. And that has all the landscape maintenance in the city is all being contracted out, tree trimming street sweeping, all those used to be done by city employees. And uh, we've cut 27 positions from our budget, and that's uh, part of the, the big savings that we've had is, is uh, the $5 million I spoke of earlier is because we made cuts where necessary and also uh, renegotiated our contracts, and uh, it's, it's saving us money. We've got uh, a retirement system that's uh, also been uh, uh, is actually a state law now, uh, PEPRA, uh, that the governor passed three years ago, uh, 
employees have to work till they're 57 and don't retire when they're 50. So big changes. Uh, it'll take place in the, the next 20 years. As, as a 30 second follow up, uh, so when you discuss the programs that have been outsourced, do you recommend that they be brought back in to the city or? No, no, I don't recommend that at all. We've, we've shown that uh, it's working for us. It's saving us money. Uh, we have uh, an in-house uh, uh, building department that's actually uh, contracted uh, with Charles Abbott and Associates. They've been here since I retired. Actually, I started it when I was with the fire department building department. Uh, we hired them, and then they've taken over all services, and that includes, uh, you know, the all the planning, all the actually not planning, but uh, all the plan checks, all the staffing at the counter. They're contract people. We don't pay their uh, pensions. We don't have pensions for them or their benefits. So we pay one price, and if we need to staff more people, they provide us more people. But we don't have them long term, and that's. Uh, you know, it's, it's paid off uh, and to our benefit. Th thank you, Mr. Nagel. And at this point, I'm going to um, instruct the audience that Miss Mary Parsons and Mark Chu are going to uh, collect questions. So if you have questions, please hold them up and they'll walk up and down the aisle. And we'll continue to the next question to Mr. Nagel, which is, what is your position on Fountain Valley Ballots Initiative Measure HH and why? My position is that I'm in favor of it. I think it's what we need to do. Like I spoke of uh, in a previous question is that we need to pay down our long-term debt. And the sooner we do it, the more money we save over uh, time. And uh, I believe uh, essentially the, the real need is, uh, is we need to save our uh, public safety and keep it at the current levels. We don't want to cut that. We don't want to see our response times go up. And uh, people may say, well, that'll never happen. Well, it will. We close a station. It takes a lot longer for somebody to get over there from a neighboring city or our own people uh, from station one. Uh, we uh, are seeing changes, and it's not just our city. Westminster's got problems with their budget, and uh, La Palma, they have one cent sales tax on the, the ballot this year and other cities are gonna follow suit in the years to come. Uh, it's not uh, something that's just gonna go away. But we need to get rid of our debt, but we also need to see that our public safety is kept intact and continue to deliver services when all the, their crime rates gone up 41% and our uh, medical aid calls have gone up 27% in the last four years. So that's, the statistics are there. And it uh, speaks for itself. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. Ms. Constantine, the next question to you is, do you recommend that the city make budget cuts? If so, where and how? Or do you recommend the city enhances the budget? If so, how and for what? In regards to the budget, um, first I believe there should be a thorough budget review. We need full cost recovery on programs and classes. We need to really look at the overtime possibly further cross training in positions where we can. We need our city staff to implement revenue enhancing opportunities, surely they've been working on. We have an amazing city staff here and I'm not gonna say anything bad. I'm also not gonna say anything bad about our, our hardworking police and fire. They do an amazing job with just the most fabulous response times for the most, for the most part. The thing is, it's an election year, and we could have done better than to put a, a measure on the ballot. I'm very against this, and um, it's going to last 20 years and, and have some negative ramifications to our hardworking residents and our businesses. But I'm sure, too, there's a lot more we can do as far as the financials here. I, it's not easy sitting up here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. And Mr. Tucker, the next question to you is, what three citywide programs do you consider most important and why? Public safety, public works, and the senior center. Um, 
for the same reasons that they mean the same thing to everybody else on the dais. Um, we are at a crossroads. We are at a crossroads. The future of Fountain Valley remaining a nice place to live is in the balance. Do we want the same old, same old? It ain't working. We are in dire straits. I ran for city council three times. If I was on city council, I promise you, with the perspective from the private sector, things would be different then we can just keep going back to the well. Term limits is the intent of the voters. I don't see that their intent is properly being honored by the current council. Fiscal stability, as stated in several of the ads in the Fountain Valley Living by some folks running for city council, is about as stable as nitroglycerin. There's no physical stability. Well, we're running a 1.3 to 1.7 million dollar deficit, so I guess that's stabilized. But it's not what we want. Fountain Valley deserves better. I want your vote November 8th. What you see with me is what you get. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And Mrs. Brothers, the next question to you is, what issue or issues do you view as most important in the city of Fountain Valley and why? Well, a lot of those have already been stated here, and uh, certainly public safety is right at the top. That is one of our core services. Also infrastructure, and we do have an aging infrastructure, and for all the seniors out there, uh, you know what aging is like. It uh, sometimes costs more to maintain, and if we're not able to maintain our infrastructure, I do have to wonder how many businesses are going to want to come into a city with infrastructure that's failing. And we just plainly do not have the funds to uh, take care of it in the way that we'd like to. Certainly programs for our seniors and our youths. Uh, it's important for seniors for their quality of, of life and we want to continue to provide those. and services for youth, activities for youth, keeps them occupied, keeps them um, off the street in the afternoons after school and in summers. And as far as cost recovery on what goes on at City Hall, there are limits. You cannot, in essence, make more than it costs you to provide a service. That's the law. So we do nearly every year look at full cost recovery and we put it in place where we can. We can't just raise fees to make more money. And um, in regards to office maintenance, I'm, I'm puzzled as to what that means, but when I look out at the city and I look at what would happen without additional revenue, all of your maintenance, your parks, your roads, your, all, your parks are already suffering. We have uh, playground equipment that is in not the best shape. We have no funds to replace it, so it's basically being boarded up to keep it as safe as possible. Uh, if it goes beyond that, it will be taken down. Thank you. Mrs. Brothers, if you could elaborate just for uh, with a, like a 30 second response. When you said that um, the infrastructure needed improvement, what, what specifically do you mean when you say infrastructure? Well, it needs to be maintained. And I'm talking about our roads, our parks, um, our sewer system, our water systems. Water kind of takes care of itself, and sewer to some degree does because it's a uh, pay-as-you-go um, fund but all of our other infrastructure, our storm drain pumps, which if it ever rains again, um, and we all know from our history that it likely will, and there could be floods, and those storm drain pumps are 45 years old. Thank you, Mrs. Brothers. And Mr. Tucker, um, the next question is, do you recommend the city make budget cuts? If so, where and how? Or do you recommend the city enhances the budget? If so, how and for what? Uh, for the last six years, I have suggested 
finding ways of attracting businesses to Fountain Valley. That's what we do in the private sector. And to say that the city can't do that, the city can do that. We need to be, think outside the box uh, at the um, building and planning department, find ways to accommodate people who have new ideas. Um, yes, we do need to make some cuts. We are 1.3 to $1.7 million in the deficit. That is 3% of the city budget. Every single person in this room runs a budget in their household. If you were forced to go out and beg on the street or to cut 3% from your household budget, I don't think very many of you would have a paper cup on the city corner. You'd cut the cable. You'd find things that aren't necessary. You'd find a way to cut them out. I attended a city council meeting a few weeks back, and the city is going to replace a van that has 44,000 miles on it. 44,000 miles. I have 213,000 miles on my vehicle, and I'm still driving it. But the city's going to replace a truck with 44,000 miles. Now they'll say it's old. We want something new. Think outside the box. We could rent a brand new van when they needed this specialty vehicle. Each and every time they wanted to take the vehicle out on the road, they could have a brand new van for way less than what it's going to cost to replace the vehicle. So there's just not enough critical thinking. It's spend the money, we'll just raise taxes. Um, it, it's going to be a combination of both, but the tax that's proposed is excessive and unfair to the residents of Fountain Valley, so I oppose, I, I oppose it vehemently. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And I, I apologize and, um, to the audience and to our, our panel. Uh, Mrs. Brothers, I have a, a temporary lapse here as whether I asked you two questions the last round, the last go around, or if I s just asked you one and skipped one. I know that I asked you what issue or issues do you view as most important in the city of Fountain Valley and why. What I want to make sure is that I did I ask you what three citywide programs do you consider most important and why? No, but it's pretty much the same. Okay. Would you, if you would like to elaborate, we have two minutes for you, or we can um, move on down either way. Well, the programs remain the same. Um, public safety programs and um, senior and youth programs are certainly important to the city and the citizens and in regards to uh, I want to speak a little off topic there into the morale of the city uh, first of all I can't think that you can guess at the morale of the city and frankly our social media is what's driving that uh, into the ground and um, I want to talk to the in, since you gave me a few minutes the intent of term limits I we actually will be okay. we have, we have a question that? from the audience Perfect. that's going to deal with term limits and we're going to get to that okay thank you um, but the most important programs are maintenance of our infrastructure and um, saving interest and understanding the budget that that $1.7 million shortfall this year grows to $4.4 million next year and uh, in three years. And think of it as a credit card. We're making the minimum payment on that credit card. So the balance roughly never goes away, uh, certainly not in my lifetime. And with 1%, we can pay down our debt and have it gone and be debt free in 18 years and that's why the 20 years was thought of and that's why uh, the one percent was set in place because we have more than the structural ongoing deficit that we owe thank you mrs brothers and uh, the next question is to ms constantine and it is what is your position on fountain valley's ballot initiative measure hh and why well it's a it's a um, ballot initiative in the opinions of many, to include myself, misleadingly named because it, it drags our police and fire into it. Um, what's I going to say? Um, it has negative ramifications if you want to buy a car, truck, motorhome, RV, boat, you know, because it's uh, 
the tax will be based on where you live. If you live in Fountain Valley, you will pay more no matter where you go to buy it. Same goes with appliances if they're delivered to your home. Fountain Valley address, that's going to be the key on that one. Um, it's not fair to our businesses. It's not fair to our, our hardworking residents in the city. They're going to have to reprogram their registers, change a lot of things. Um, it's not being put out there to the people correctly, and that's what's causing the morale problem here in the city. People are at odds with each other, and social media is only part of it, but I personally do not sit on my device or at my computer all day long. I would just be unhealthy if I did so. I'm out in the community speaking with people as I should, and I'm not even going to say what I'm hearing because I don't want to get blasted for it, but the reality is there's a lot of misconception out there. And it could have been handled better. Honestly, I am not for Measure HH. It's bad for our residents, it's bad for our businesses, and it's bad for Fountain Valley. It's very, very excessive. It's excessive. Because right now, the way the tax is, is structured, we get a portion of the sales tax. This is a full 1% increase that would come to our city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. And uh, Mr. Nagel, the next question to you before we get to audience questions is how do you propose Fountain Valley attract new businesses? Well, one of the things that uh, we've been trying to do uh, over time is uh, get with our uh, uh, shopping center owners and uh, have them look at the ramifications of empty buildings uh, in their complexes and uh, helping them uh, we send uh, interested uh, people, uh, business people that have come to the city. We try to lead them to uh, sh centers that uh, you know may be successful for them. So those are the things we try to get them to understand that maybe putting a new front on their buildings and cleaning up uh, the landscaping and uh, uh, all the paving around the buildings, uh, trash enclosures. Uh, we've even used uh, 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 code enforcement to help uh, make sure that some of these things are done and uh, improved uh, at some of the centers. So uh, we've got a, a center at uh, Edinger and Brookhurst that is thriving because they've put money into it and uh, the owners have uh, really done an outstanding effort to make sure these things happen and make sure that their centers are where people want to go shop. And it's uh, very important that uh, we help no. the businesses by uh, okay. yeah, they did there. giving them ideas, but also uh, putting things on our website that is available to them uh, when they want to come to the city and show what uh, things they have to do to open a business and make certain that uh, uh, we help, uh, help them with the process and uh, get them uh, into a, a business and get their business uh, started and hopefully very successful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nagel. And we'll, we'll come right back to you with the first question from the audience, and it's, can you please tell us how you define term limits? Well, the term limits that are being discussed tonight, and uh, appears that they're very misunderstood, but uh, it's clearly written that uh, was voted in by the voters, and uh, uh, the process is three four-year terms. You could sit out two years, and you could run again and run and serve another three terms. That's clearly what it is. Uh, I wasn't on council when it was voted in, but uh, I'm asking to run uh, one more term, and then there'll be a seat open because I'm not going past my 12 years, if that's the case. But uh, I, I believe that it's uh, very clearly stated and, and shouldn't be misunderstood at all. And uh, whether I believe in term limits or not, the voters have the say on who, who gets elected. So thank you. Ms. Constantine, would you like to comment on the question about um, how you define term limits? Yes, I agree with um, Councilmember Nagel in regards to um, the years that were put forth. I, 
that's a tough one. I mean, it, technically speaking, you know, um, to have served a couple of terms and then have a, a break of two years or more, though being in compliance with the, the letter of the law, the spirit of the law is, is something else. And I mean, in people's minds about, and again, this is nothing personal about the incumbents here, but in people's minds, they don't want to see people on city councils for a lot of years, and that's just what they believe. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Constantine. Uh, Mr. Tucker, would you like to uh, tell us how you define term limits? Yes, I would. Um, I would define term limits, and I actually voted for it in 2004. I'm a 34-year voter, haven't missed a single one. And when term limits came up, it was my understanding that it was a city council member could serve for three, four-year terms, and then they were done. It was only this year that I found out that there's a loophole that doesn't really make sense to me, but you know, the devil's in the details. You got to read the fine print. And that voter book, as thick as it is, there's an awful lot of fine print. So I find out that, yes, you can serve for three terms, four years, sit out for two years, come back, serve three years for four terms, sit out for two years, come back, serve three years for four terms. Is that really the spirit of the law? Is that really the intent of the law? That ordinance was written by politicians, actually by this body, the city council, for this body. Have you ever seen when a fox watches a chicken coop and they leave the door open? We got some dead chickens in this town. So I think you understand how I feel about term limits. Thank you, Mr. Tucker. And Mrs. Brothers, would you like to? I would. Thank you very much. And, the, and just the question is, can you please tell us how you define term limits? Well, I define term lim limits as the voters approved them in 2004, and that is three consecutive terms. And by the way, my first term was grandfathered as according to the law. But serve three consecutive terms, lay out one cycle, and come back. And the only other option if you're putting term limits on the ballot, and some cities have done this, and their voters have approved lifetime term limits. Our voters didn't approve that. They wanted the ability that if they liked the service from someone, that they could bring them back if they were willing to serve again. And um, I don't know how anybody up here can, can determine the spirit of, of the voters. Um, and not knowing what the proposal said is, I think, clearly uh, the responsibility of the voter. And if you didn't understand it, then I'm surprised you voted on it at all. But um, so you can speak to the intent. That has to be your understanding. And then I can speak to the letter of the law, which I'm certainly uh, willing to follow. And um, so yes, it's three consecutive terms, one uh, voting cycle off and then you can come back and absolutely you could repeat that as many times as the voters want to put you back but it's voters choice voter, voters approved that process thank you thank you mrs. brothers there a lot of the uh, questions from the audience are um, on the hot topic of measure HH and um, the, the first one we're going to start with, and I think what we'll do here is we'll stay with the two-minute allotment um, for this next question, and then the follow-up questions we'll cut down to one minute and see if we can get through uh, a handful of them with the time that we have left. Um, the next question, and we'll start with you, uh, Mrs. Brothers, is what are the fiscal implications for Fountain Valley residents if both the school bond and sales tax are approved by voters? Well, the school bond, as I understand it, is um, a property tax assessment, unlike the sales tax. Uh, if the school bond passes, if you believe that uh, that's the wise thing to do, first of all, it doesn't impact everyone in the city because we're not all in that school district. It also includes uh, a number of residents in uh, Huntington Beach. and they will have an opportunity to vote on that. 
18% of our student population, as I understand it, in the school district 